بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings and from them is gathering on this platform to remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who the angels bestow or we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his mercy upon and those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in a gathering which is better than this gathering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge and to allow us to act upon that which we know. To proceed, <clears throat> inshallah ta'ala will continue with, or we'll start our series of lectures pertaining to uh, the most important affair that an individual puts his time and his effort into and the reason of his creation which is ilm tawheed the knowledge of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ilm al-i'tiqad the knowledge of one's creed and that which he believes in his heart and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma'rifatullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his mercy and his wisdom, he ordained that he sends for us and to us messengers that are merciful to his servants that teach them and guide them to him subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained that he is from the ghaib from the unseen and he has ordained that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not connect to each individual or each one of his creation to tell him that which he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these messengers who are the best of people, the best of mankind, to teach them about him subhanahu wa ta'ala and teach them about what he loves and what gets them close to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to teach them that which he hates and that which keeps them away from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then upon us then, brothers and sisters, is that as humans, and as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the guides of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who guide to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and guide to his ridwan. They guide to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained that we are khala'if, yakhlufu ba'duna ba'da. We are a species, and he ordained that all species on this earth shall be 
come in one after the another, meaning one will die and another will be born, another will die and another will be born. So he ordained upon us death, and he ordained upon us the, the Khalifa, the Khalaif, succession, one after the other. And that is from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his creation. So when this is the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these messengers that are from Bani Adam, from these khala'if. And he made them also khala'if yakhlufu ba'dhum ba'dha and tetra, one coming one after the other. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا تَتْرَى Indeed, we then sent our messengers one after the other. And for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us or the sabiq or the one that comes before us a guidance for those who come after them whether these guides are the guides of khair or whether these guides are the guides of sharr and the best of these guides are the guides of the prophets sallallahu alaihi wasallam from adam until muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained upon this ummah that he gave them one messenger and when he gave them one messenger, he made that messenger the final one and the best one from these from from those messengers. Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Anakhatam al Nabiyin. I am indeed the seal of the Prophets. Meaning that prophethood is sealed with me. And that the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be sealed up until the day of judgment. So there will be no message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But with the marhma of Allah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his hikmah, he allowed from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those who take this knowledge and carry it. And with their carrying of the knowledge or keeping of knowledge and learning the knowledge and acting upon this knowledge, they shall be from the successors of the Prophets. And they succeed the prophets and they come after the prophets in way of teaching the people that which the prophets have taught or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically has taught. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them guidance for us as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we shall not have a prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So upon us, believers, is to take these guides as stars and take them as lentils and beacons to show us the way to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, we are in darkness after darkness. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide us, and we do not take these stars as guidance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will become from those who are lost. And from these scholars, And from these guidance and stars, 
is Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab Ibn Sulaiman Al Tamimi Al Najdi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And before I mention anything about this Sheikh, then I'll give you the reason why I call these stars. As the ulama, they call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ulama and the ulama and the as the, as the scholars Afwan, mentioned that the Nujum and the scholars have a similarity the stars are used number one as alamat as signs for those who walk in the darkness of the night and the scholars are also these signs and maps for us. They have the maps and the signs for us to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just like the stars guide those in the darkness, the, the scholars, they guide those in the darkness. And number two, the scholars, the stars are... Zinahli as They are beautification and adornment for the skies. And likewise, the scholars are adornment for the earth. For indeed, when this knowledge is or the last scholar is taken from amongst us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we do not see such time. That when the last scholar is taken away from this earth, that last zina, that last beautification of this earth is taken away from it, then the hour shall be established. The hour shall be established or near its, its establishment. And the third affair which likens these stars to, the, to those stars is that the scholars or the or the, the scholars they refute and they are heavy and they are missiles to the shayateen and ins and jinn just like the stars in the sky are missiles for the shayateen al jinn so the scholars should be taken as stars we shouldn't take the tawafi those lowly lives ashabu dunya those people of the dunya as stars and we shouldn't call them stars, rather the stars for us, Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are scholars. And from these people that we should be following and taking as a star is a Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Rahab, like I mentioned. And why is this? Inshallah is a question we shall answer bi ta'ala by understanding his life. And understanding his da'wah and understanding that which he taught. As I mentioned to you, his name is Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, Muhammad the son of Abdul Wahhab, the son of Sulaiman, at Tamimi, from the Qabila at Tamim of Tamim, and Najdi. And he is from the place called Najd, which is in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia. A place called Najd, an area called Najd, which is closer to the center, and it's Riyadh and that which is around it of areas. 
And the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala was born in the year 1115 after the Hijrah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 1115 after the Hijrah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was born in a balada or a city or a village called Uyayna, which is a city that is northwest of Riyadh. And now, if I am not mistaken, it is part of Riyadh. He was born there and he grew up there. He learned, he had scholars that he looked up to and taught and learned from, such as his father, Suleyman, uh, Abdul Wahab, Afwan ibn Suleyman. Abdul Wahab ibn Suleyman was from his prominent teachers, and he is his father. The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala learned and memorized the Quran from a young age and he also learned jurisprudence fiqh from his father Abdul Wahab ibn Sulaiman and he is from the scholars that the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala looked up to and learned from and his father was a judge in that village of Al Uyayna. And when the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala reached puberty, he had left for Al Hajj. And he went to perform the Hajj in Mecca and he took from scholars there. Then he went to Al Medina and he stayed there a little longer. And he took from two great scholars in that city of Al Medina. They are Sheikh Abdullah ibn Ibrahim ibn Saif al Najdi and a Sheikh Muhammad Hayat al Sindi. And at the time, we shall know that these regions were regions where the postage and the signage of the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had diminished. Islam was only known by its name. As shirk and bid'ah and sins had prevailed throughout the lands of the Muslims at that time. So Medina at the time, just like the rest of Saudi Saudiya and the rest of that region, was plagued with worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and plagued with sihr, magic. And superstitions, and likewise, all types of ma'asis, sins. And that is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if one was to ask, where were the scholars at that time? The scholars were teaching people. But it was very, a mujtama that needed more than scholars. They needed... A man like Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, to revive it. And inshallah Ta'ala will learn what he did, Bidnillah Ta'ala. But this was the hal of Uyayna, the hal of Riyadh, the hal of Mecca, Medina, and likewise other places. Now you go to Mecca and Medina, and you find in Medina there is no grave which is worshipped. You find no darih, no buildings built upon graves. 
Alhamdulillah. But the time of the Shaykh and the time before that, there were buildings built upon the Adriha. They were built, the, 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 the Qubur, عفوا. there was Adriha built upon the Qubur in Baqi' and likewise in, uh, in Uhud. And I mentioned this for us as Muslims to look at the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed upon us. To allow a land from the lands of Muslims and allow our fellow Muslims to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners and to seek only from him and want only him and be guided by the scholars to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and not away from him. So when you visit these lands, then understand the ni'mah and the thing that they've been through before it was, it is the way that you are there. You're doing tawaf and you only hear tawheed. You hear labbayk Allahumma labbayk, labbayk la sharika laka labbayk, inna alhamda wal ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. Here I am, O oh Lord, here I am. I'm listening to you. I am, I, I want to come to you, my Lord. I'm connecting to you, my Lord, alone. La sharika lak. Alone without any partners. This wasn't the case at the time of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. There were graves worshipped and people doing tawaf around graves, seeking from those closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking from them things that they cannot do. Going to the, the black magic places of black magic to do black magic on people the tawhid al-khalis came after and we'll see inshallah ta'ala with the hayat of the shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala how he achieved this goal so when the shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala went to these two mashayikh it is mentioned that he went to one of them and said look look at the state we're in he was hurt and the scholars were hurt at that time. He said we could only try our best and do what we can. Even though they used to call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and educate the people. Lakin, the majority of people were taken by the majority of people. Meaning people only follow that which they know and that which they have knowledge of. And they had nothing, not much knowledge about Tawheed, but rather the scholars and the stars of Shirk and Bid'ah and Khurafat had taken them away from the Sirat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after this, the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala was distraught and he learned from these scholars like, like he learned from them. And then he went on his way to Al-Iraq. And in Iraq, he went to Al-Basra. And he took from the scholars there in Al-Basra. And that's when the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala started calling to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, calling to Tawheed, calling to Sunnah. And he was propagating this very much among the scholars, among the, the, the youth, among the mujtama', among the society. And he was known for this. And he used to debate the scholars at that time in Al-Iraq and Basra, about these things about Tawheed and Shirk upon Bida and all these things he used to debate them about and he used to teach the people likewise and he was his 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 reputation had begun to grow and he had one Shaykh called Muhammad Shaykh Muhammad Al-Majmu'i there in Al-Basra and because of the propagation of the of Tawheed and Sunnah, they were they found times of difficulty from the scholars, the deviant scholars. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala fled Al Basra after teaching the people Tawheed and debating the scholars and teaching as much as he could and calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after he was ridiculed and beat, 
and those scholars had come after him to cause him harm, he fled Al-Basra and he went to Asham. And all of this, I mentioned the Shaykh Rahimullah Ta'ala had sabr, he had patience. And this is needed for a person to cause Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to have sabr. And a person who has knowledge to have sabr. And a person who is seeking knowledge to have sabr. For indeed the harms of this road are many. So the Shaykh Rahimullah Ta'ala, he fled and he went back to his homelands. He went to a place called Az Zubair, and from Az Zubair, he went to another place in Saudi called Al Ahsa. And after he'd stayed in Ahsa for some time, he had then went back to his homeland of Al Huraymila, or he went to Al Huraymila, which is in his homeland. Where he was born, he was born in Al Uyayna, but he went to Huraymila to his father, who had moved to Al Huraymila in the year 1193 after the Hijrah. So the Shaykh had entered Huraymila around the year 1140 after the Hijrah, or after that. And his dad moved to Huraymila because he had, he was a, a Qadi, a, a judge in Uyayna. We had some trouble. Uh, there with or a, a disagreement with the with the Amir, the prince of Huraymila of, of Uyayna. so he moved to Huraymila. And in Huraymila, the Sheikh Rahimahullah Taala continued his seeking knowledge and teaching of knowledge and a da'wah the propagation of knowledge until his father rahimahullah ta'ala had passed away in year 1135 of the hijrah and after his father had passed away some of the low life people who oppress people and take their money and do as and kill them and, and do harm towards the Muslims. The Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala was wanted by them and they wanted to kill him because he had propagated and told the Amir of Huraymila at that time that he should. Put them in their place and cause them harm for indeed their harm to the people is great as they were taking their money and they were harming the people in different ways so because of his propagation to the or his his delegation to the Amir the prince they had become angry and tried to kill the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he left there and went to his birth, birth village, Al Uyayna. And when he entered Al Uyayna, the Prince at that time was Uthman ibn Nasir ibn Muammar. And for us to understand the time of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, then it was a time where and Bilad Najd and Hijaz and he, all the areas in, mid, in the Middle East were going through tough times. As the lands there had different umara, different every village and every kilometer had a Amir, a 
prince governing that place. And some of them had alliances with other princes and some of them were on their own governing a state. So the governor of Uthman ibn Nasir ibn Muammar was happy that the Sheikh had come back and he allowed him to propagate his da'wah and to teach people and the Sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala continued with the da'wah and he continued in teaching people until people became understand or became knowledgeable of their religion and knowledge, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the correct way and worshipping him subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right manner and a lot of them had left off the shirk and bid'ah they were upon and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed his da'wah to be famous again and the shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala was very vigilant and he worked very hard in propagating al-Islam in the right way. And he would have communication with the Umrah at that time. The Amir of that time, Uthman ibn Nasir ibn Muammar. And from the good things that the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala had advised the Amir of that time, the Prince of that time to do, was to go and eliminate and to take down and destruct a qubba a building that was on top of the qabr the grave of the sahabi al-jaleel Zayd ibn al-Khattab and the shaykh showed him the proofs that this isn't allowed in the religion so the shaykh went with the amir the Prince at that time, Uthman ibn Nasir ibn Muammar, with 600 men to go and take down this, this uh, building. And when this had happened, the people of that town, when they heard that the Amir was coming to take down this building, they came out to defend it and to protect it. So when the Amir at that time saw this and they saw that they had come out to protect it, he had stopped and they ceased from breaking down this building. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala took it down by himself with his own hands. May Allah have mercy upon him. So after this propagation and continued propagating, the Shaykh continued propagating the deen after this affair, and, pe and some people weren't too happy with the propagation of pro proper Tawheed, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the prophets and the people that came before us always had, they always had people who would be against them and would have they would have people who would fight against them the sheikh also had people who were fighting against him and trying their best in order for them for the sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala not to propagate what he was propagating and to call to what he was calling to but the sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala continued jazahullah khaira may allah enter him into highest ranks of Jannah may Allah give him, reward him with abundance of good and another story that happened to him in that city was that a woman came to the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala and he was the Qadi of that city he was the person who was uh, the judge of that city and one of the judges so a woman came to him and had well, Iyad Billah committed fornication. She had fornicated while she was married. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala asked the people, but she didn't come to him once, she came to him numerous of times. So he asked the people, 
is she crazy? Is she drunk? Is she? He took the 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 due diligence before he had came to a decision regarding her case. So they said no, she's she's sane and she's not intoxic intoxicated. What she's saying then is taken as iqrar, is taken as affirmation that they had committed such an act. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala had no no choice but to stone her to death. As this is the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for her to come out by herself was indeed something which is commended because she wants to be purified from the sin that she has committed. And she doesn't want to enter into her grave and finalize her life while knowing that she had committed such sin and that it might be doubtful for this affair of Tawbah, even though she asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, then she didn't want to be in doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive her. And these hudud, these legislations by our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala are not inhumane. But rather the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that whomsoever a had a, a legal action, legal legislated action had been taken concerning the sin that he has made, that those hudud will be a forgiveness for them in the day of judgment. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul it's sin twice but rather once either you get punished in this dunya for your sins and you become what it becomes wiped out or in the day of judgment so the shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala had no choice after she had came by herself explaining to him that she had committed such an act but to take her life in such a way and when the people at that time, or the haters of the Shaykh and his da'wah at that time, had heard about this, they had told the rest of the umara, the rest of the princes. And like I said at the beginning, that these princes sometimes had other princes that were in charge of them, giving them money, looking after them, who were stronger than them. Then this affair had gone to a prince which... was giving the prince Uthman ibn Nasir ibn Muammar this other prince which I will mention his name in a, in a bit he was giving Uthman ibn Muammar some gold and protection so when this When when this um, Amir had heard about the issue, he said to Uthman ibn, and this uh, this Imam, his name was Sulaiman ibn uh, ibn Ar, Uray Ar al Khalidi, and he was from the Bedouins, but he was looking after Uthman ibn Muam ibn Sulaiman ibn Muammar, and he used to give him gold and money. He said to him, if you do not kick the Shaykh out or kill him, I shall. And he, wrote, he wrote to him that if you do not kick the Shaykh out, and if you do not kill him, I will be taking away your money. So the Amir, he called the Shaykh and he said, listen, I have been ordered, instructed, to kill you and I do not want to kill you so please just leave my village 
because we are not able to fight this Uthman, uh, this uh, uh, Amir Khalid, uh, Al Khalidi, F1, which is Suleiman ibn Urayr. I'm not able to fight him, and I cannot live without the money that he has given me. So, please, I do not want to kill you. Just leave my village. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala advised him and said to him, if you are to take this da'wah, because what I'm calling to is the deen of Allah, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm calling towards la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the affirmation of this kalimah and the kalimah of, and the shahada of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he deserves to be followed, or he should be followed, and if you continue aid in this religion, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with your aid and your truthfulness to aid in his religion, will aid you and make you stronger than this and then allow you to overtake this individual. And the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala told him to have patience. But the guy or the Amir at that time, he said, I'm not able to fight him and I'm not able to uh, I'm not able to have patience upon this just for this so please leave my village even though the Shaykh Rahimullah Ta'ala was born and raised in this village and this reminds you of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his da'wah of Tawheed as the, as the Shaykh was kicked out of the village that he was born in Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kicked out of the, the, the city he was born in. But the affair of the deen and the religion of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is not that which is not a simple, simple thing, brothers and sisters. For indeed, whoever supports this religion truthfully and whoever, so whoever aids this religion with sincerity, then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will aid him and give him victory over his enemies. So the Shaykh, he had left Al-Uyayna. And he was narrated that he, from Al-Uyayna up until Dir'iya, where he went to, the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, was reminding himself of the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he would re re recite to Allah the, the, the verses in Surah Al-Talaq. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about those who fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعْلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدَرًا The Shaykh would re repeat to himself this ayah or these verses which translate Whomsoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keeps his duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will make a way for him to get out of every difficulty. And he will provide him from sources he never could imagine. And whomsoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Verily Allah will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala went, then went to Adir'iya. And he walked all of the distance. He left Al-Uyayna In the evening, and he reached Al-Uyayna at dawn the next day. And indeed, this shows you that our scholars and predecessors and those that we take as leaders and, and those that we follow If they are righteous, just like Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, 
and we follow them and we take them as stars then inshallah ta'ala we will succeed and I will, pull, I will conclude upon this bi'idhnillahi ta'ala we will continue in the next lesson the life after the exile of a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his grace and his virtue that he allows us to have guidance and take guidance from him his book, his messenger and these scholars we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to follow their footsteps we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to his way a beautiful guidance we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us firm upon his way that we worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone up until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift our ranks and the ranks of our parents and our siblings and those we love and those who have a right upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives us, our parents and everyone who has a right upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives our scholars and those who taught us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his word la ilaha illallah high and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see the fruits of our iman in this dunya and bear the fruits of his love, his love and the judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, that he takes away the suffering of all our brothers and sisters in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the princes and the kings and the, of the Muslims in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be one ummah upon kalimat la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabina muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen